Hello and welcome to another video. In this tutorial, we'll be setting up a Git environment on Windows so you can start using Git for version control and software development. We'll look at installing both a command line interface as well as a graphical user interface so you can interact with Git in multiple ways. So in terms of an outline, today we want to look at three things. First, we're going to install Git for Windows, which is a lightweight set of tools that's going to allow you to use Git on Windows. Second, we're also going to install PoshGit, which is a PowerShell module that provides additional features on top of the normal Git for Windows functionality, giving you things such as status summary info and tab completion. And finally, we're going to install GitHub Desktop, which is a GUI that provides another way to interact with Git using a graphical and a bit more user-friendly interface. So with that, why don't we go ahead and get started? Alright, so let's take a look and see why we first need to install Git for Windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start PowerShell, which is actually my preferred terminal interface for Git. And if I just go here and try to use some Git commands like Git help, we're going to see that Git is not actually installed on this machine and it's not recognized. So, as you can see, we need to install Git first before we can even do any work with this. So let's go ahead and close PowerShell. And I'm going to start up a internet browser of choice, maybe Chrome here, and let's just search for Git for Windows. And make a quick note that this is actually not the first uh, hit on Google that you want. It's actually this one down here where it's the URL is actually gitforwindows.org. So let's go ahead over here and we'll see that this is where we can download this lightweight set of tools to install Git on our machine. So I'm going to go ahead and install this and once it finishes, I will come back and we'll run the installer and take a quick look at the installation process. All right, so the download is complete. Let's go ahead and look at the installer file and open it. And let's just start walking through the process here. So I'm going to allow this to make changes to my device. And let's just walk through this and install in wherever you'd like. And I'll leave uh, a lot of the default components to start with. And here you get to pick which type of editor you'd like to use uh, for Git here. It really doesn't matter here. You may want to use Notepad++. This is actually a pretty uh, powerful text editor. Let's uh, choose this and then you'll see that I actually don't have it installed on my machine. So if I wanted to use Notepad++ plus plus as Git's default editor, I would have to go and install it at first. But, you know, let's just go ahead and use Vim right now. In fact, down the road, we're actually just going to use PowerShell. So this choice really isn't going to matter too much. Now here, why don't I just go ahead and again, use the default uh, installation setting here. This is going to modify the path in my environment so that Git is found by my appropriate shells. So let's just go ahead and again, leave the standard. And again, I'll leave the standard normal default installation options here for most of these commands and options. And I'll go ahead and hit install. And we're on our way to installing this on our machine. So why don't I go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back once this completes. All right, and we're back and it looks like that has uh, successfully installed. So you know what, I really don't need to see the release notes. So let's just go ahead and hit finish now. And we can go ahead and close these. And now why don't we go ahead and start PowerShell again and see if that worked here. So again, let's go ahead and get PowerShell all on the screen here. And now if I were to do say git help, we see that great. Now PowerShell and other uh, command line interfaces understand about Git. So we have successfully installed Git on this machine and this is the minimal amount of tools needed to get working, but we would like to add some extra features. So let's go ahead and exit out of PowerShell here. And let's go ahead and try to install PoshGit now. So to do that, what I would like to do is again, start up an internet uh, browser here, and let's just search for posh-git here. Again, PoshGit is this uh, PowerShell module that's going to add additional functionality here. And we see that uh, it's the first hit that you get here. It's actually a repository on GitHub. So if I come here, 
what I want to do here is I actually want to clone or download this to my local machine. We'll see we're going to need that in a second and we've got actually a video in this series later on that talks a little bit more about creating and cloning repositories so if you're more interested please watch that video but if you really don't care about that and just want to get Poshkin on your machine just go ahead to the github.com slash here's the name of the uh, developer slash Poshkin and then go find this green clone or download button and click on it and then you basically want to grab this URL here and luckily GitHub has this nice convenient copy to clipboard button. So if I copy that and or sorry, if I click on that button, I will have copied this URL to my uh, clipboard so I can go ahead and close this now. And uh, let's go ahead now and take some next steps. All right, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a folder on my machine where I can download all these uh, GitHub files from. So I'm going to start a Windows Explorer. And you know what? For this example, let's just go create a folder directly in the C drive. So I will right click and say new folder, and I'm just going to call this GitHub for now. And again, if I go into here, this is an empty folder as expected. So let's go ahead and just start PowerShell. And let me see if I can get both of these to display at the same time to make this simple for us and more visible. So what I want to do here is let's go ahead and change directory to that location that I just created. So, um, and if I take a look here, it's empty like we expected. So again, now what we can do is type git clone and uh, PowerShell will know what to do with this because we've just installed git. And what I want to do is paste in that URL that we just got. So what that's going to do now, if I hit enter, is you're going to see that this is downloading all those files from GitHub and cloning them or copying them to my local machine here. So I've got all these files here. I can go into this repository right now and uh, we see that there are a lot of these files. I can come back over here to PowerShell and I can go into this repository. And again, if I take a look here, we see that, yep, here are all the files as listed in PowerShell, and they are all sitting there in Windows Explorer as well. One thing I might want to point out and call to your attention right now is, notice that we're in a GitHub repository right now, but I actually don't know the status of it in terms of, is are my files up to date? Uh, are, do I have changes here locally that need to be pushed up to the server? We're gonna get into this a little bit later on in some of the future videos, but again, I wanted to call your attention to this right now because this is exactly what we're trying to do with PoshGit. PoshGit is going to allow us to understand the status of these uh, of the repository without needing to do things like typing git status all the time here to figure out what's going on. So with that, let's go ahead and take some next steps. I'm going to clear this terminal just so we can uh, get this to look a little more clean. Notice here in the PoshGit repository, there's this file called install.ps1. This is a PowerShell script that's going to allow us to install PoshGit or modify our PowerShell profile so that uh, this module is loaded every time we start. Now what we're going to want to do right now is going to is try to execute this script here from PowerShell. Now you may or may not have success with this. So if I try this, we see that, well, I actually can't do this because running scripts are actually disabled on this system here. So the first thing I need to do is uh, fix that problem here. So to do that, what I'm going to do here is, first of all, let's go ahead and um, close PowerShell because I'm going to want to start and run this as an administrator to save myself any headaches in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's close this as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and start PowerShell again by searching for it in the Start menu, but then again, instead of just directly clicking on the PowerShell, I'm going to right-click on it and say Run as Administrator. And when I get the User Account Control dialog, let's just go ahead and say Yes, I know what I'm doing, so let's go ahead and uh, minimize this so it fits on the recording screen. And now what I want to do here is let's just check. So what you can do here is you can do something like Get Execution Policy and we see that it's currently restricted. That's what caused the error earlier. It's basically saying that we're not allowed to execute these scripts. So what I want to do here is I actually want to set the execution policy to unrestricted. And uh, again, let's go ahead and make sure that we want to change the execution policy. And let's just go ahead and say um, A, yes to all. 
Great. So now what we can do here is let's go and um, uh, change the directory to the GitHub slash poshkit. And now let's go ahead and try to do our slash install.ps1 and run that script here. And hopefully we should have success this time. And we'll give this a couple of seconds here to run. And I will pause the video and come back once this completes. Oh, actually, look at that. It completed already here. So uh, we should be good to go. The reason I know it's good to go here is if you remember earlier, we called out and said that when you were inside this PoshKit repository, we didn't know about the status, about what was going on. And now you see we've got this nice turquoise um, note that says we're on the master branch and we're actually up to date here. So PoshKit is installed and we should be uh, ready to do to some development. And just to show that this should work f uh, across uh, Git sessions, let's go ahead and close this instance of PowerShell and I'll just start it back up again here. We don't even need to run it as an administrator. And let's go ahead and do our cd dot dot, cd dot dot, cd github. And again, maybe I'll pause here just to draw your attention to it. We are not actually in a GitHub repository yet, right? We are just in the GitHub folder, which holds the repository. So now you notice there's no turquoise uh, special markings telling us what branch we're on or what the status is. But if I do CD posh git, the second I hit enter here, right? Sorry, CD posh git. Um, I will enter into a repository and at that point we're going to see PoshKit take over and we see we cut back here with the, with the nice turquoise uh, denotion of what branch we're on and the current status. So great, PoshKit is installed so I think we've knocked out items 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and exit out of PowerShell and let's go ahead and do the last step which is installing the uh, GitHub desktop application. So to do that, again, let's launch our favorite uh, internet browser here, and in Google, just type GitHub Desktop. Whoops, sorry, I misspelled that. I bet it still got it. Yep, here it is. It's usually the first hit. Again, the URL is desktop.github.com. And again, this is our nice GUI interface, and we're going to go ahead and just click on the download for Windows 64-bit. And we'll go ahead and download that file here. And once it completes, I will come back and we'll take a look at that. All right, so that finished. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at the installer file and just run it here. And this is going to install this onto our machine. So we'll run the file and walk through the install procedure. It should be pretty straightforward and simple. And this is taking a little bit longer than I would like here, but this is not the fastest machine in the world, so I guess I'm not surprised. So tell you what, why don't I go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back when we're ready to take some next steps in the install procedure. All right, and we're back, and it looks like the installer would like us to sign into GitHub or create account an account if you don't have one already. I'll go ahead and sign into my GitHub um, account, which is clum, and I'll just type in my password here. And let's try to sign in. And you may need to uh, configure Git by putting in your name and in your email here. And you know, this is probably good enough for now. Let's go ahead and hit continue and uh, finish and great. And here we are, here's our GitHub desktop application. Let me kind of minimize everything else so we see what we've got. Uh, here we are, and we've got the application installed here. We see we've got a nice icon on the desktop for this now. And again, this is our graphical user interface for interfacing with Git. So between this and then PowerShell with the Posh Git module installed, we should have a good way to interact with Git. So in future videos, we'll talk about setting these up here and using them for actual software development on a special project here. So with that, I think that concludes this video of getting your Git environment set up on your Windows machine. I hope you'll join me for the next video where we're going to look at cloning and creating repositories and making use of some of these tools we put in place here. So thank you so much. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.